We need to get some power into this gale. I'm not this gale. This big blue one here. While we were at the NEC, we met a company, didn't we? Yes, we did. Who did we meet? Chwala. Yeah. Emma can say it. I can't. Say it. The company Emma said. Right. <clears throat> now, they do solar. And the thing that drew us towards this company was the fact that the panels are micro-thin panels. Like, ridiculously. Look at them. So, we got two 100 watt panels, one 20 amp MPPT, and enough cable to wire a house. So, we're going to install solar onto the transit. You notice how I'm always doing the heavy lifting? He's got one little item. Oh, no, he hasn't even got one little item. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on the roof. We've cleaned the roof because it was a little bit dirty. And we're going to stick these down to the roof. You'll notice on these panels, there is no fixing points on them. So they have to be glued down to the van. With whatever choice of glue or sealant you require. We're not... Engaging. Yeah, we're not going to say you must use this type because somebody will only complain we've used the wrong one. So we're gonna use the one that we think and other people who have done this type of job before have used. The good thing about it is, we've got a special one, haven't we? Yes, we have. What's so special about it? It's blue. Blue, blue sealant. So if anything comes out on the edge, we're gonna know. Right, just a bit of a disclaimer. These are solar panels. They produce... Energy. Hmm mainly in the form of electric. Now, we start plugging wires into this, they are live. The minute this is outside into daylight, these are putting out a live feed. So be extremely careful because you are using and you are connecting to live feeds. Doesn't matter the amperage, it doesn't matter the voltage, they are live. Some people say, oh, it's only 12 volts, only a couple of amps, be careful. Just be careful, it's live. Don't mess with live and cables. Live and cables? Live and cables, mm, both. Or most people would say live cables. Just think about your safety first, guys. Yeah. That's what you're trying to get to. So they have connections on the end, male and female. We are gonna be plugging into them. Again, be careful. Some people cover the panels up, some people don't. We're not gonna be covering them up because we think we know what we're doing. A lot of people would beg to differ. A lot of people. Probably 80% of the people. But to us, we've never had a problem, have we? You've not blown us up yet, babe. No, <laughs> we're good. Right, let's get on the roof and decide where we're going to put these panels. We've got up onto the roof and we've placed our panels towards the back of the vehicle because the wind flow comes this way as you're driving. So what we've done is we've got majority of the panel is gonna be stuck down on this part here, with a small part of the panel stuck down at the back there. And then in between, we can place our gland there. And then the cables can come into that from these connections here. The cables, the, which are the side cables here, they're gonna run through this pass here, and then they're gonna go into the gland there. But we need to get these stuck down first, and then we can tackle the cables and the glands. So once our panels are in place, what we are gonna do is we are gonna take the positive off this panel and the negative off the other panel, and we're gonna connect those together. And then we'll have a positive and a negative feed from either side going into the van. So the cables are going to run in through this gland, which we are going to place right in the middle there of the two panels. Just like that. Right there. So it keeps the whole panels nice and neat and tidy. So firstly, we're going to mask around the edges of the panels, just so that we know that we're not going to have any seepage from the sealant when we put it under and we know where it ends. Let's get tape. Let's get a masking.
Now, the reason we put the tape on is that when we mask under over there, if any of it comes out, we can just rub it, peel this back, and we get a nice neat line. On to the next job, taking the panels off and putting the sealant on. Right, we're going to be using CT1 Blue. A lot of people have used this in the past. It's caused no problem for nobody. So, that's what we're going to use. Okay then. Right, let's get this on the roof. Right, now we've got the um, sticky stuff on. Time to get the panels up. Right, we do have a little bit of seepage that's come through there, so we're just gonna wipe that off, then we can take all the mastic off, then peel the tape off. So as you can see, now we've taken the mastic off, we've got a perfect line right there. Right, so we've measured 12 inches back from the rubber, which gives us that spot right there, which lines up to the roof on the inside, so we can get this on, and we can have it that way. We're gonna go with it that way, and then we're gonna pull the cables across there and go direct in. So by measuring 12 inches in, it means that we've missed, just missed this inner pillar here which is what I wanted to do. And then you can just see through there, I don't know if you can, but the light might be good enough. We can just see the ceiling right the way through there, but there's enough space there for us to get the cables through. We're gonna clean this up, then we can put the cables through, get this on, and then we can leave it overnight for all the actual sealants to go off and go hard. But we need to get the cables through there first, get them fed into the van, and just get them hanging out the back here. Right, so we have thread some copper wire through, which we've managed to get through, down and under. What we've done up top is tape the wires to the other end of this, and then we're just going to feed it through and down. So we've got enough cable in there, and we've got plenty of cable up here us to be able to connect the solar panels to the MPPC. Now what we can do after getting the cables through is we can feed these through the actual gland and then it's all sealed up. Once this is on the roof, that's done. We're done with the roof then, apart from connecting these two together, which we're gonna do later on. Now what we're gonna do is because the cable goes through the moot roof and there's no gland on there, we've just put some rubber conduit on and we're just gonna feed that all the way into the hole. That way, none of the cables are gonna rub on the edge of the van, which is perfect. Also, this side is gonna be negative, that side is positive. So out of our gland, we want the negative here, positive there, which is dead easy, because we've got the gland off, we can feed them through from the inside. Just like that. Negative on. And then once we've cleaned this, we can then put this down and we can seal that to the roof. We've got our two cables in the right order coming out of the gland. Then all we have to do is tighten these up to close the seal on it. All good. But what we'll do first is we get a bit of sealant around there, seal around here, and then we can place that down and leave that overnight for it to all go off. I've gone a bit mad around there, but I want that to stay sealed, so there's not going to be any issues, just in case there's a leak, a little bit of added extra security, and then I'm just going to go around there,
Then we just go around, tidy that off, leave that overnight, and it's all done. Okay, so we've got all the cables through, all connected. Left one off, haven't we? Have we? The positive, because we don't want to go click, click, boom. Click, click, boom. Mm. That sounds bad. So, now we're going to mount the MPPT. Good thing with these is, it comes with a little hole thing, so you know where to actually drill your holes. Um, ah, I have put some screws in there, and we're going to see whether this lines up with that. So Emma can go in. Right, so we've got that mounted on there. What's next? Right, so first we've got to run the cables from the battery to the MPPT. So the wire up the MPPT to your battery first before you connect your solar. Yes. Right, we need to put some lugs on the battery cables and make sure they're all safe and tidy on top of the battery and connected properly. So, let's uh, see how much cable we need. They're both on, so we can just put some heat shrink on them just to tidy them up. Emma's just heat shrinking the cables up to the battery. Once we've got the battery cables connected up, we'll measure the length because we've got loads of length in the back, I'll show you now. We've got tons of length left in the back there just to make sure we can go through. So once, like I said, Emma's finished doing that, then we can cut them off, connect it up to the MPPT and then connect it to the battery. Right, so as you can see, we've left it overnight. All the cables are on now. And we've decided to go in this way with this. We were going to run the cables through this gap here. We just thought having the actual cable glands facing this way was going to be better because they are sort of aerodynamically made for the wind to come over this way. So we've just come along there with the cables straight in on each one, connected it up there. They're all sealed. They're all sealed. Just cabled it down to there and then gone straight in. So. They are nice and neat and tidy on the roof. Right, so all the cables that are going into the MPPT, we did actually put ferrets on them just to tidy them all up a little bit. And we're just gonna put some heat shrink over them like that and then get that heat shrink. So it's all nice and secure. Right, so this is gonna be really hard to show, but there's your screen there. And um, we're not getting any solar at the moment because it's absolutely, it's near enough dark. Uh, but we've got it set on the bottom there to lithium. To change that, or to get into the settings, you hold the right hand key. Then you can choose between gel, solid, flooded. You can go to user, which is the actual settings. So if you wanted to change the settings or the parameters within the box, you go to use, USE. Then press enter, then it will give you, you can go from 12 volt, 24 volt. We want it on 12. So which is that one. Press enter. Then you can go in your equalize mode. You can go in your boost mode. And you can go in your float mode. Then you've got low voltage and high voltage. And then you're back to your battery. So we're going to go back onto lithium. And then hold that key. And then it will set it. So set your parameters on basically what type of battery you've got. Um, don't rely on prefix settings. Go in and actually look at your battery, find out what the settings are on your battery for your boost, your float, and things like that. And basically just do it that way. In the manual itself, there is a page where it will give you recommendations for settings for each type of battery. Um, whether you decide to go off these settings isn't totally up to you. But that's the unit in there now, it's all set in. We put it in that cupboard basically so if you're standing here at the back of the van, you can see the actual controller. In there, it's all out the way, and then you can't see nothing. But if you wanted to get in and to see the solar panel controller, you can see it right there. Battery's all connected. 
Everton's connected to the solar panel, Everton's in, Everton's working, Everton's neat, tidy, tucked away and done. So, that is solar fitted to the Ford Transit. But if you do want to get yourselves a set of these slimline solar panels, I'll leave all the links in the description to the company we got them from. Get in touch with them and see what they can do for you. So, right. We've got more jobs to do now. After doing all that, we might have to move this cupboard out a little bit because we've got a night heater going in somewhere. Don't really know where we're going to put it because it's not a massive space. We can't put it under the swivel seats. We will have to figure that one out as we go. Right, I'm gone. Catch you later.